Kinlik mo tong video na to because you want to go to Japan as a freelancer. Don't worry, I got you. So para mas madale, I will break this video down into five parts. Number one, where and how did I apply? Number two, what are the requirements? Number three, how did I get approved? Number four, how much does this all cost? And number five, other tips. Before I start the video, let me introduce myself. My name is Justine C and I'm a travel and lifestyle content creator. So nagbibigay ako ng mga detailed informational travel tips and also mga travel vlogs about my life. So if you're interested, you can follow me on all my social media channels. Okay, so ito na. Number one, where and how did I apply? Usually kapag sinasabing Japan visa application, ang unong pumapasok talaga sa isip ng mga tao is rally tours. I mean, wala namang problema sa rally tours. Doon nga kami nag-apply before. Pero yung mom ko namin yung nag-apply for us kasi noon. And teenager pa ako noon, minor pa ako. So yon. just letting you know, nag-rally tours din kami. But this time, as an independent, self-employed freelancer, nag-apply ako using Universal Holidays Incorporated under Visa Center PH. So ano tong Visa Center PH? This is an app online ako nag-apply. Nung una, medyo na sketchyhan ako kasi parang, paano yung online? Sure ba talagang legit to? Usually, walk-in talaga, di ba? I actually recommend it. Kasi unang-una, mawawala na kayo ng back and forth. Kapag nag-walk-in kayo doon sa mga visa centers, may possibility na, ay, mali yung documents na dinala mo, kailangan bumalik ka pa dito. Yung mga ganyan, so sayang pa sa transportation fee, sayang sa effort, sayang sa time. Ang ginawa ko dito is in-upload ko muna lahat ng mga documents na kailangan. Then, may agent na mag message sa inyo via text or via Viber kung ready na for delivery yung documents mo or kung may kailangan ka pang baguhin doon. Meron akong mga mistakes na nilagay. Buti na lang sinabi sa akin at naka-resubmit ako ng documents. Once approved na yung mga documents na sinan ko online, yung mga soft copy, sasabihan ako na pwede na akong pumunta doon sa location nila which is at Lusitani in Makati. Binigay ko na lahat ng mga documents ko in a brown envelope at sinubmit ko siya personally. April 30 ako nagsabihan Submit. May 3, delivered na siya kaagad sa bahay. And eto na, meron na akong Japan visa. Moving on to question number 2, what are the requirements? Medyo madami yung requirements, pero basic lang naman. Of course, you would need your valid passport and your old passport na may Japan visa na expired na if ever meron kayong ganon, pero hindi yung required. ID photo na specifically 45 by 35 mm. Pwede nyo yan i-DIY sa bahay nyo, pero I suggest pumunta na lang kayo sa mga photo studio, like mga picture city, ganyan, kasi doon ko ginawa yung sa akin. Tsaka alam na nila yan kapag sabihin mong Japan visa, pipicturean ka na nila, ipiprinta nila Japan visa ID picture na yun. Kailangan din ng filled out application forms. Kung nag apply ka lang for single entry, isa lang yung application form na kailangan mong i-fill out. Kapag multiple entry naman, may isa ka pang form na fill outan. So that would be two application forms. Take note na kapag nag apply kayo, kailangan two to three months prior to your travel date. Then you would also need your birth certificate, marriage certificate kung meron, bank certificate within 6 months. Kapag plano niyong pumunta sa Japan at mag-travel lang doon for 4 days or less, napakabilis, pero kung yun lang talaga yung gusto nyo, ang minimum lang naman nila sa bank account mo is 50,000 pesos. Diba? Napaka-konti lang naman yung kailangan. Hindi sila masyado mahigpit doon sa part na yun. Which is good. Thanks, Japan! <laughs> then, you would also need a daily itinerary. So, let's say 7 days ka nandun, kailangan nakalista talaga yun sa document. Day 1, check-in sa airport na ganito, go to this tourist spot, ganon, day 2, ito naman yung gagawin, day 3, and so on until day 7. Make it as detailed as possible para ipamukha talaga na meron kang plano. And then, if you have a business, that would be great. Idagdag nyo rin yun sa documents nyo. Pero if wala, okay lang. As a freelancer, yes, I am BIR registered kasi illegal kung hindi. I've been doing content creation for almost 3 years and yon. ito yung main source of income ko. Kaya nilagay ko doon, may ITR ako and everything. Then for other supporting documents, hindi to required but I highly suggest maglagay din kayo doon ng cover letter. Nilagay ko doon yung mga brand deals na nakang-work ko the past few months, yung mga content na ginagawa ko, why I plan to go to Japan, and all those other stuff na para makita nila na hindi ako nagjo-joke at gusto ko talagang mag-tour sa Japan as a normal tourist at hindi ako mag-TNT doon. Then, if may sponsor ka naman or guarantor, kailangan meron kang letter of guarantee and also your relationship between the applicant and the guarantor. O ba? Medyo madami yan pero kaya naman. Number 
number three, how did I get approved? Ito naman, ina-assume ko lang na ganito ako na-approve kasi wala naman makakapagsabi sa atin kung paano or ano yung reason kung bakit tayo na-approve eh. Kasi may mga ibang kilala ko na meron na silang Japan visa before, tapos may US visa na rin sila, pero na-decline. On my end, ito lang yung assumptions ko. Di ko sinasabi na ito talaga yung way, but I feel like it also helped out. Nag-apply kasi ako ng multiple entry, so meron ako multiple entry form. Sasabihin mo yung reason mo. Napakadali lang kapag sabihin mo, I want to tour Tokyo. Kailangan magpabibo ka, di ba? Kailangan talaga very detailed yung gusto mong gawin doon. So, ang tip ko sa inyo, i-chat GPT nyo na lang yon. Actually, kasi yun yung ginawa ko. Nagpatulong ako sa AI. Yes. And then again, of course, gumawa kayo nung cover letter na sinabi ko kanina. Kasi kapag may cover letter, mas na-explain mo yung sarili mo. So, number four, how much do you have to pay to apply? Now, I'm not sure kung nag-increase na yung price ng UHI or Visa Center PH, pero nung time na nag-apply ako, yung single entry was 700 pesos, multiple entry was 1,000 pesos, and then yung courier fee was 250 pesos. Itong fee na to is kapag gusto ko na lang i-deliver sa bahay yung passport. Number five, other tips. So of course, yung pinakaunang tip ko sa inyo, be real and authentic. Kung wala naman kayong gagawing masama sa Japan, kung hindi naman kayong magsistay doon illegally, then you don't have to be scared. Isulat nyo lang doon lahat ng mga gusto nyong gawin in detail. I can't stress that enough, kailangan detailed. Second tip, mag-apply na kayo sa multiple entry visa. Bakit? Eh kasi, kung nag-apply ka ng single entry, decline ka. Kung nag-apply ka sa multiple entry, at least may choice kung gagawin kang single entry or decline. 300 pesos lang naman yung difference, might as well, doon na kayo sa multiple entry. Kapag nabigyan kasi kayo ng single entry, within 3 months nyo lang siyang pwedeng gamitin. Pero kapag multiple entry, pwede up to 5 years. So yun lang naman yung mga kailangan yung gawin para magkaroon kayo ng Japan visa. If you wanna see more travel tips sa Japan or kahit sa ibang bansa yan or kahit dito lang sa Pilipinas, then you can follow me kasi yun yung ginagawa ko for a living guys. I travel for a living. I hope you join me in my journey. If you have other questions or may namiss ako, just leave them in the comment section below at sasagutin ko kayo. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe. Hope I helped!